In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the darkness was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay. Um... In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? The celestial and the, and the physical, all right? And in the midst of the celestial, you had the physical celestial body that we call earth, all right? And it was a water planet, and it's considered in scripture to be the womb, the womb of life, all right? All right, so you have the celestial and the physical, all right? And the earth was, out, was without form and void. Being a water planet, as water and the waves, it does not have a, a constrained or a constricted shape, all right? And uh, as a womb, it, 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 it being comprised of water, okay? And there were no dry land or uh, uh, dry lands within it, okay? And we have the core of the earth and the core of the earth is as an egg all right it is as an egg all right and the earth was without form of void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the deep the deep of the earth which would be equitive to the mariana mariana's trench okay can also be in terms of creation connotated as the deep recesses of consciousness would be the unconscious mind, all right? The unconscious mind, the subconscious mind, all right? From the depths, from the depths of the water, from the, you know, where the depths of the water is or the middle mass of where the waters are of the seas up to the surface of, what, of the water, all right? That could be your, the, denoted as the subconscious mind and the, and the heaven connotated as the conscious mind. Or your thoughts reign. All right, it's in different dimensions, but in terms of creation, what I'm putting together for you here is to show you that it was uh, this this earth, this world, uh, this earth was constructed. All right, by by a supreme intelligence, by wisdom. That is what's being shared here in Genesis. All right. So uh, uh, continuing on, and God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. All right. Um, and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness all right so here okay so here um, light light in terms of dividing the light from the darkness in terms of metaphysical elements linking into that which is spiritual will kind of take consciousness the closest that we can perceive it all right so therefore where there is knowledge knowledge being temporal in which men study science wisdom which is celestial is therefore eternal and celestial wisdom or the wisdom that of only one star could not fit in that of a mortal man's mind but in man's pride, we seek to understand all of these things according to science and science being measurements, mathematics and all of these things. When the divine conscious of wisdom and the wisdom of God, the father of the ancient of days, he cannot be calculated or measured. Therefore, it takes faith to understand and know him. So when there was light, he took light and he separated from darkness was the natural aesthetic of him being comprised of light, him being comprised as consciousness, not a physical light that you see in the sky, but of consciousness if we were taking it from a quantum way of, uh, of understanding spiritual elements or celestial, celestial things. Consciousness would be comprised of pure light. Within your mind, you may examine a thing where there is no darkness or no shadows, but there's no light bulb. 
You could put a cube inside of your mind and you could understand that cube in totality without that cube casting a shadow. But there's no light per se as in a light bulb or a candle inside of your mind or inside of your brain. But where man studies science and examine things in the, exter in the external world in which where we live, you could set a cube on a table and where the light hits that cube are the, is the basis in which you could have understanding or perceive that shape. But darkness in the external world, you cannot perceive that cube whatsoever. All right. Even if you perceive that cube, no matter how you put it, in some shape or form, that cube is going to cast a shadow unless you have several lights. But then there will always be one side of that cube if you set it upon something that you will not be able to see. Unlike your conscious, you are able to perceive all sides of that cube. You are able to understand all sides of that cube. It's quite, it's quite different. So in terms of creation, creation, things were created in terms of, you have to think in terms of dimensionally. And what I mean by dimensionally is in the core of the heavens, in the core of that which is celestial or spiritual, you will find a physical element no different than that cube, which is, as we're speaking of the earth, a water planet. And this consciousness, this celestial body, it didn't have a, it, it didn't have a form and it was void. Okay. It didn't have no land masses on it. And you got to think of just like, a, if you think of like a, let's say a sphere of water floating in the air. Okay. With no wind or anything like that whatsoever. Right. Then it's kind of, it's kind of without shape, but you understand in your consciousness that just like that is in the core of your con in the core of a space of consciousness spiritually within the core of that there is a core within those waters all right the floor the floor of that ocean no matter how deep you go there are some form of of tectonic plates and that is like a vault also just like the outside the outside of this water planet also has a vault that we call a firmament and another word for far firmament is vault but within that vault that vault divides the expanse of waters and the expanse of waters that's divided is the is the waters that is in the third heaven and the waters that is in this world okay in other words, in Earth, we live in something like a snow globe, and it's written that the firmament is hard as a molten looking glass. Now, those who connotate and lean towards science, they will never understand this. And this is the darkness of their mind, because they must understand and perceive things externally. But unidentified flying lights have to generate a great deal of heat to pass into the Earth barrier because they have to go through the molten looking glass. These are facts. These are facts. So space is as a vault. And what are the treasures in the glory of space are the stars and the other celestial bodies. Okay. And the glory in the earth is the, at the core. You know what I'm saying? There, there, it, it is as a vault. What treasures lie within the core of it, we don't know. We don't really know. At least I don't. Some ancients might know if they've been around for a while, but that's not really given for, for, for me to examine. But this is what we have so far according to the word of God. So, um, We got here. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to start at one six. And, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. 
And uh, okay, so just to recap, just to recap a, a certain thing, okay, in Genesis chapter one here in verse two, it is uh, after the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. When we speak of the spirit of of God, uh, okay, um, the spirit of God, which is the Holy the Holy Spirit, and you know Hebrew brothers know how to say, you know, I don't know the proper name, Ruach Hakodesh, which I'm not so great at, you know, the Hebrew language. But in in other words, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God, okay, being uh, 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 the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, okay. Remember how we were saying that the Spirit of God is, 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 is written in the New Testament being like a wind because nobody knows from whence it comes and where it goes. Okay? And the face of the, and the Spirit of God, and it's, you know, the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters, when you think of a, of a breeze, Going over the surface of water, a uh, surface of water, it tends to control the waves, doesn't it? Depending whether it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a soothing breeze or maybe a tumultuous breeze, could dictate the size of uh, of the waves to a certain degree. Okay, so here I just want to connotate the spirit of God being life in the face of the waters. Okay you know, creates a split image between heaven and earth, or as some believe in the knowledge is, as above and so below, okay? And the face of God, face of God is the word pineal, okay? Or what people, you know, determine or call like the third eye or what have you. And pineal meaning the face of God, all right? is as the unborn spirit and his reigns and throne are of insight and foresight. His navigation is as the heavens, stars, or the phytoplankton of the sea. These are like shimmers of light or golden paved roads. It says that the roads in heaven, in the third heaven, the, 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 the streets are paved in gold. Okay? The streets are paved in gold. In outer, in, in, in outer space, so-called, we will speculate. Those of us who, who, who are simple-minded that live on the surface of the earth, we, we, will look at the, we will look at the stars, all right, within that vault, and they shine, they shine like diamonds, don't they? Or it is, it is as light. Right after the separation of night and day when you look into the ocean at night there are creatures called phytoplankton that have a bioluminescence that give off fluorescent light so there are many things that are going on here in these images in terms of as above so below i'm showing you something repeating in space and something repeating in time whether no matter how large or how finite Okay, I'm showing I'm, I'm showing you a, repeti a repetitious process as in if you see it in one place in terms of those people who are very good at mathematics, if you see it in one place or algebraic is expression or something like that, you're going to see it in a different place. It's going to have some form of reflection, um, pattern, rhythm or frequency and which it, it should all fit within the same spline. Okay. Um, so therefore, the ministry of life, all right, are the minist the ministry, the ministry of, uh, of the, of these stars, of these lights is life. The angels are of sounds. The ways are of peace and the fruit is purpose within the principles and magistrates of life. The Holy Spirit in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 
Okay, reads, Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, here I'm connotating this <laughs> here I'm connotating this verse to show you a finicy of celestial wisdom or, or yeah of celestial wisdom pertaining to man's knowledge and man's knowledge of understanding that which is celestial. Meaning that before you were even created, the spirit, which is God's face moving upon the, f the face of the waters as the earth was created, as a man with a woman, the face upon the waters. All right. That spirit. Even when you get down and I'm not trying to be facetious into groanings and sighs in terms of intercessions. Look at the link there between consciousness. There is a divine wisdom that is making intercession for your ways, your understandings. Bioluminescence and light, phytoplankton and stars. Who uses stars to navigate the sea, but semen? Seamen use the stars to navigate, to, to, to navigate the waters. And are their faces, are their faces not upon the waters of the deep? And are these not the faces of those who were once unborn? And is it not equitive the same in what it is? And all these things, all of these things are relative and the same. And beyond man's imperfect knowledge, there is wisdom. And in the things that we even pray and hope for, there is a greater wisdom that has deeper understanding in the depths down to our unconscious of what we truly need and us being in our competence in the height of our understanding, being severely incompetent to even utter words to God, to be regarded merely as babies, as time does not pass for him the same as it does for us since our fall but well, we haven't gotten to that part of scripture so i think it's interesting how things echo in terms of this situation but when we get to man's knowledge and we get to science and we see things according to science in terms of geometry and patterns the flower of life in the whole nine Science does not always equate to that perfect pattern. And in science, we can see the imperfections of our knowledge. And in our imperfections of knowledge, we use it to measure God. And we say that he's not real. But here in the creation, just within the first couple of days, we see many things echo in terms of life itself, even though we haven't gotten to the creation of man, we can understand where this thing is going. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and waters move in waves. Waves are created by force, and such forces are pushing upon the deep revere as propulsion, as in the waves of a submarine or unidentified flying objects, the ability to self-sustain the journey and the combined effort of the egg is as a drive. That drive of propulsion and sustainability being as a celestial or star, the light of the world, the sun, the promise of God, the truth, the life, and the way, and the life of the world we know as Jesus Christ, we are starting as in the celestial. The sun pertaining to light, light pertaining to knowledge, and consciousness is first formed in the heart, as the heart forms first in image, and it is defined, and it is defined as the solar plexus or the core drive in the core of the earth. 
The earth is in the feminine principle, thus mother and her and her nature post fall is her nature post the her nature post the fall, which I'm talking about the fall of man, and I'm denoting mother as in mother earth, men being comprised of carbonite or dust of the field, then men are also in the feminine principle. All right, meaning that the elemental status of a man is the dust that he's comprised of, Mother Earth, all right? And her nature post-fall is cruel. So nature, post the fall of man, had became cruel to a degree, all right? It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't so, it wasn't such a nurturing situation, all right? Um, and this is for i believe this this to be for a reason this could be speculation also because post the fall of man as it's written later on in genesis thorns and thistles it shall grow is that since the nature of man changed the nature of the earth changed in order to protect itself as not to get raped to a degree she has to be on guard more so to keep to keep to keep her to keep her go her, to keep her glory rather than to release it and this concludes with definitive structures also as in the protective nature of a mother in regards to her baby as so the earth also the core of her loins is her vault or her firmament Continuing on, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, all right? So God calling things into existence by command of his word, a promise, and his son is his word and promise of truth, the life, and the way, all right? Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. The reins as a rulership or a chariot as a light body and the light body is as a sperm. Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 15, 5. And the Lord took him outside and said, Now look to the heavens and count the stars if you are able. Then he told him, So shall your offspring be. At Genesis 26, verse 4, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Semen absorbs ultraviolet light and re-emits that energy as visible light. Christ is the light, and his word is the promise of the gospel to navigate the deep of her waters, Mother Earth that is, and sailors navigate by stars or luminaries. All right. There are certain there are certain dangers and protective protective measures regarding the depths the depths of the ocean. Rather in dealing in the physical when dealing with a significant other. There are many there are many dangers or rather in or rather navigating the sea whether physical spiritual interpersonal pertaining to conscious all is the same all is relative and in these things I question whether science can measure any of these things where they can all equate but all of them are equitative to some nature or degree pertaining to the flower of life. And this is starting here in, in, in Genesis. Um, we've only dealt with really the first six, the first six verses. God divided the light from darkness. All right. The sperm is as a messenger carrying the gospel. 
The light is the word of God and is set apart from the knowledge of this world or age. And he called the light day in the darkness night. Consider the light day in terms of heavenly wisdom and night is the darkness and darkness is the knowledge of mortals. In the day, in terms of the day star, the entire body is illuminated and that shadow cease to persist. Day and night do not coincide. Returning again to Genesis 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. This is the as above, so below dynamic in which the firmament is as a vault which contains the earth as a protected egg from the hazards of space. The waters surrounding the egg are separate from those within it. All right. This is the firmament. All right. Uh, space is as a vault. And when you reach like the third heaven, you're coming under the, the depths of the ocean to enter into the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. All right. Also in such dividing the heaven and earth by vault in which the comprising of the viscera material man and the physical components of man in such procedure can be known by knowledge which is sensual and earthly. However, the heavenly components down to the conduct of forces, DNA and incorporeal factor are more so a mystery. All right. So that which you could measure according to God, because there's a scripture in here that says, the knowledge, the knowledge of men is foolish to God. In other words, there's another scripture to back that up that denotes that pretty much the height of man's wisdom is the foolishness of God. In other words, he considers the knowledge of man to be as to be as a serpent, to be as sensual, sensual, or you, you know what I'm saying? The intellect and intelligence of man, the greatness of man's intellect, he considers to be foolish. You know, because at best, all we can do is, 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 is study. Science is the study of things. At best, we can do all we can do is study God. Science is just another format of studying God, but it's contradictory or a splinter to deny him while studying science. All right. That's why I, that's why I bring up Stephen Hawking so much, because once he figured that once those two dots connected, you know what I'm saying? It, it was no it was no way to deal with that brother he was he was gone he was on a whole nother level he could see all kind of stuff then right and we see it that we, we we deal with things in the same way because when you deal with wisdom you deal with the commonality of things what are the several ways that we are the same rather than the few ways that we are different and society and our social structures we focus on a few ways that we are different rather than in the commonalities of how we are all the same and one way we could provide a structure and another way we could break it down. And that way we break it down is knowledge by looking at the difference rather than the commonalities. This circumference of measurement is as wisdom that is the same dynamic that we are using to break down Genesis and the dynamics of life in creation as the spirit is bringing Carrying on, this may ruffle some feathers. The proof of clones is proof enough. The physical acumen can be replicated. However, the true spiritual essence, such as the components of soul, cannot which navigate the fields of spiritual wisdom and organizational properties and emotions, accessing such knowledge and in what way or how. Meaning, you, <laughs> you can even retain a memory and you can know everything that you're, everything, like you could transfer, you can transfer our consciousness to a degree, or in other words, the memory knowledge of an individual and, uh, to another vessel. But in what ways that individual felt and why they felt that way and the finicity of how they, what they associated with that memory, how they accessed that memory in their mind, all of these things cannot be mimicked within the next K 
carrier of that of that consciousness if that makes any sense okay there's a lot of different nuances in the weighing in the scales and the balancing of the soul and the fact of the matter is i would find it hard to believe that with precision true pinpoint precision that any type of technology produced can fully reassess that as the individual that was before although we can it, 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 it can hypothetically according to new segments that's been re released in the media and what have you with people who have experienced with this thing hypothetically it, 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 in, in terms of what they can reproduce hypothetically if they were to reproduce something outside of animals or recreate something that they could fully recreate that consciousness and essence of that individual therefore in such matters speaking in the creation of the earth in the beginning and in man's knowledge or in the knowledge of whatever the ages that were that were before one would have to speculate as a consciousness created all of these things can consciousness truly be trans transferred or transported to another inf individual perf perfectly or would those individuals be different that's something that's something that i would ask is the likeness of a father unto his son it is so but is it a perfect likeness i can tell you here and now i am not exactly like my father i'm not i can tell you right now i don't i don't i don't, I don't nearly have the same work ethic as my father did that's 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 you know what i'm saying that's for sure but in capacities and ways in terms of overall being and calculating the commonality overall is it easy it would be easy to see in the core dynamics of my nature that i'm definitely my father's son not pertaining to genetics but my ways how I think about particular things and how I move, even though my expertise and intellect may be in a different field. So these are situations pertaining to, uh, pertaining to this verse. All right, so carrying on, this is, um, Continuing on from Genesis 6 through 8. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament and the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. As in heaven and earth, whether space or sea, there are depths in, in either, and both are navigated by way of ship, submarine, or spacecraft. The expanse of space proceeded in a higher heavenly dimension which is beneath third heavens seas and the seas of earth and space connect by doorways thus ufos allegedly can navigate either hypothetically i'm speculating i believe that on i did on i did identify flying objects there is old footage accessible on the internet on youtube that's pretty much been classified as real as coming out of the water more so often than people think so ufos which we could call them spaceships right we have ships in the ocean or type of ship in the ocean they're spaceships spaceships they could fly in any terrain they're like an all-terrain vehicle all right uh, this is just furthering on continuing the dynamic of as above so below in the creation of how things are created or echo in um dynamically you can see the same pattern of creation all right god called the firmament heaven the firmament here in resemblance to the egg considered a vault and the space in the midst of it heaven as in a treasure um i want people to account here that the evening and the morning was the second day 
denoting the first day of darkness, a youngin. I, 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 the first day being darkness, and, 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 which reminds me of if anybody has read Carl Carl Jung, and dynamic of consciousness, dark night of the soul. Um, that oftentimes great things are created in the dark and then they are and then they are brought or they are refined or as in some people uh, get into in some terms of things a more base dynamic of, of, of alchemy okay or refinement uh, originally starts in the dark a lot of times by the time you can look at an MMA fighter you know you do, you may not see them practice and all the things that they do because they're doing that outside of the scope of the camera but their work really comes to fruition when they come into the ring and you see everything that they have put together and how prepared they are to deal with you know circumstances and events all right but uh yeah you know uh so it makes me think of of um the morning the uh the evening and the morning the second day denoting the first day of darkness a young and dark night is dark uh dark night of the soul in which day breaks with light of the gospel a new start as a type of short death and resurrection as in the well of jonah this is uh connotative to a ray of hope and the night before okay if you think about like the night before I want you to think about also the morning after. All right, considering what we're calling this 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 co the core of things as an egg. The morning after, right? The spirit of Herod like the morning after pill. Right? The night before and the morning after. Okay? Of the heavens, okay, of the heavens, the message is sent and from the start as in the as in day one all right sleep is like a short death and walk according to the dictionary used to be determined as a series of short falls i haven't got into that yet but <clears throat> a lot of things are created out of the dark pertaining to consciousness all right created in the dark i should say um You know, from day one, if you look at it from day one, where where uh, where it says, and God saw the light and it was good, and God divided the light from darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. You know, from day one, considering you know going back to dark night of soul, and you know the groanings and things like that of the Holy Spirit that happen, things that go bump in the night, everything we want to put on there. You know, the face of God hovering over the waters. All right, the core of the celestial body being 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 as a vault, no different than the vault that is as a firmament. The heat that is generated just to break the seal of that firmament. Okay. From day one, where light where the light and dark was separated on the first day, life already at that point had to battle the subtle science and knowledge of men, as in the morning after. All right. Was it love or lust? Steeping into the soul and moral competency of the DNA to the will of life or the will of death. How vast is such darkness? Okay. The battle. Okay. As in, I'm taking here and I'm cross-referencing with a simple connotation. We could see, <laughs> look at how these things echo, man. The battle between light and dark is quite is quite interesting in, in, in the sense that so many things that we take for granted and don't perceive. Say somebody go club and get wild for the night. All right. They might meet Angela. All right. At the bar. They go home. They're just getting wild for the night. Ain't nothing serious. Things happen. Things may go bump in the night. Some people believe in ghosts. Some people call them spirits. There was a face hovering, uh, there was a face upon, there was a, uh, pi a pineal, there was a face hovering over the waters. And the soul, Holy Spirit was interceding with groans. All right? Her vault, her treasures were found out. The seamen went to navigate and they navigated by the bioluminescence 
of the plankton. The sperma that it was released out with and the light separating the darkness and her legs being like rose. Collecting UV light and giving off light like stars in the sky is the multitude of sperm searching for the egg. To find her core and when that core is struck, the morning after she doesn't feel the same and there is a choice to be made. This is just someone getting wild for the night. Genesis has already happened. This is what I'm talking, all of these things echo. That there was a supreme divine intelligence and wisdom that comprised everything together. This is the same argument with Stephen Hawking and CERN. Why do you want to tear the very fabric of this reality apart? Why would, you, why would you want to do that? Because he realized the commonality in all things rather than scientifically the knowledge of the differences of all things. And therefore, in that way, you could see patterns. This is, the, this is if, if there was any subtle knowledge of man in which to study, it being applied to, towards the purpose of the Bible. That would be the quickest way to a golden age or golden paved roads, would it not? By the ways of your consciousness. And what is that sperm that, 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 that collects UV light? That gives off, that gives off that bioluminescence. And God said that he will try the rains, the spirit, the spirit of God moving upon her waters. And they call this throne, the throne of David. That's the sperm. And the sperm is moving no different than a ship or a UFO coming out of the deep. And it has a destination. But that destination, it does not exactly know. It's moving on faith. As in God calling things into existence, the inner sinning of groans, those who heard that voice and followed that instruction, one of those found the egg and that we call that race. And in that race, we have a testimony. A seed strikes the core of the earth. And that is like a colony, a sea colony. There are many different beings and creatures. I'll get into this further, but it's just kind of interesting how Genesis, we're, we're on verse nine. And already in Genesis, in Genesis you have nine verses and you can see how that already correlates all the, all the way down to something finite and things that we take for granted and just may be careless and just go somewhere and get wild for the night. And at the depths of our concerns and our knowledge, we're worried about STDs. That's what we're worried about. We're worried about giving life and this is the darkness, the knowledge of man. Whether than the wisdom and the intentions of man hearing the voice of God crying out of the Bible in order to provide life. It's deeper than just one life. It's an entire universe inside of that one sea colony. A you and I verse that echoes. These are the things that we take for granted and we're not careful. We take for granted how we got to the egg the first time. The care that was put into that. Or rather, in some cases, the lack of it, we could find grace. The intercedings of the Holy Spirit. So, continue on. Continue on. This is uh, Genesis 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. All right. The waters gathered together under heaven. 
um, the waters gathered together under under heaven. Hold on, let me see what I got here. Represent, represent. Well, I, it looks like I ended my note. I probably got interrupted. Um, the uh, yeah, the water is gathered together under heaven. I I think I get to this point later. Let me see if I hold on. Give me a second. I get to that point later. Later, forgive me. I was interrupted, you guys. All right, so let me let me re go over this thing real quick. Um, so he's talking about the dry land appearing, and he's saying the waters gathered together, and he he said uh, unto one place, and let the dry land appear. So the earth's mystery and her secret parts, um, and these places being discovered of her vaults in the deep, man is formed or rather appears as dry land oftentimes this is due to volcanic eruption which bring forth landmass or the compressing of tectonic plates all right now some people may be in a stance saying well we haven't gotten to the creation of man yet no not formally as in the man itself but in terms of the carbonite the elemental substance had not even formed there yet for man to be formed all right we're going from a conscious situation of the creation of the dry land, okay, of which man uh, is created. Um, let me continue on. A God called the dry land earth, uh, the gathering of the water of water seas. Though the dry land be called earth as a land mass containing the solid elemental mass of carbonite, which comprises flesh and the gathering of water seas pertaining to knowledge, knowledge and understanding conscious stuff. Seas and large and large masses of water denoting a body. So we call we call it bodies of water when there's a large mass of water and they're gathering just like yeah the gathering of the gathering christ the gathering of a congregation and what have you all right to gather is to congregate as one would at a church signifying an age okay let me see if i get to a certain point in my all right um and god said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and god saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day the earth bringing forth grass herb and seed whose seed is in itself and bringing forth his kind uh, the earth again is as a womb or matrix. Womb and matrix are the same word in the lexicon. Bringing forth life once it has been seated in its depths. Mother nature or Lucy, short for Lucifer, bearing the light of life in her mystery, bringing forth life. All right. It's the earth that bears that bears life. Life is in the seed. OK, women have babies. But they do not they do not have seeds. The seed comes from the man that, that that lets people know straight off the bat. God is not a woman. God is definitely a man. You could grow a tree, but you're going to need a seed to plant in the soil first. The seed. The seed is where. The seed is the, the, the seed is in itself. As in the tapestry of each man of carbonite or dust, his seed, when buried therein, brings forth life after its own likeness and after its own kind. Here we see the first fruit after dry land is herb. So the glory of the earth, the dry land. OK, the seed that it brings forth is herb, like, you know, the trees, you know, that's her glory. That's her covering. All right. It's also written in scripture written in scripture that a woman's glory is her hair glory is a type of covering okay 
So, I ain't trying to say, I'm just showing you how these things echo. I'm not trying to be facetious. But think about certain things. When God protects somebody, they're protected by something called a hedge. In life, financially, we have a hedge fund. You know, when people go do arbitrary, what do they do? The hedges, they're, they're dealing with the bush. You know what I'm saying? pH balances the whole nine. All right? So, definitely, the earth is definitely Lucy. That is Mother, that, that is mother Nature. She is protecting herself. We say, we have the conversation saying that nature can be cruel, but we also, we also have to understand that we, what we do to the earth and, and, and how we take it for granted. She has to protect herself. What are the ways of man? If I was to, if I was to walk about with my guard down constantly, you know what I'm saying? The reason why Christ gives us grace is because this world is dangerous. That's just the truth. People will take advantage of it. All right? They will. What is, what is my nature? Why do, I, why, do, why do I take on this walk? Why do I take on this walk to understand life? Who, who here has had a child and the minute that they had a child after the mother has had her child and just given birth to it, give it away to a bunch of strangers? Who would do that? Or is the mother rather protected? I've watched National Geographic. I've seen a cougar stand down a, a, a big old bear just by protecting her baby. So when we consider the earth and we use the earth for everything in terms of like for paper and all sorts of resources and utensils and things of this nature, we take, 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 take. The earth is constantly getting raped, right? But she is also the bearer of life. And what is life like? What can we truly say about life as a society or civilization? Are we not a reflection of her? Are we not brutal? Do we not treat her bad and treat each other terribly? Do we regard our father? Do we regard God? And it's become unnatural. So therefore, Christ was sent to show us a way. And though he had the power to deal with everybody simultaneously, it only would have validated our means and our cruel nature. So instead, he came healing us and he went before us, giving the gospel of life. And he took on our afflictions and our evil nature also. So that no man is without excuse. Even before the earth, there was a man who came to Christ and said that you are a good man. And Christ said, why do you call me good? Only God is good because he knew he was comprised of carbon he had flesh on he was removing the excuse from the element of flesh because flesh obviously must have some form of consciousness that came from Lucy the light bearer the life that she bare a woman the changes she has to make when bearing a seed for those nine months she can eat but she's got to eat for two now she can't move how she used to move with that seed inside of her. She has to make sacrifices. Can't be drinking, can't really be partying, can't be really wilding out like that no more. Can't. You know what I'm saying? That bubble in front of her, it's gonna slow her down. She might have aches and pains. Okay. Sometimes she get little kicks as she goes along her little, you know, trimesters and stuff, right? Then that baby comes out and that baby is what? A suckling. Huh? She got to produce milk. That baby need milk. When he get hungry, he gonna cry. She can't sleep the entire course of the night. Just to get the baby out, she got to go through earthquakes and labor pains also. Now, can we say that that baby is, is cruel? 
Not we, we can't say that. Baby comes out loving, doesn't he? Comes out loving. He brings out a different side to people in most cases. Okay, deal with that baby the same way you deal with baby. Something gets cast out of you when you come around it. Most individuals. His nature is gentle. The baby, until it gets a bit older, pretty much trusts everyone. Where did that baby come from? The baby, his body was formed in the womb, in the earth, in the vault of the earth. Right? It's got an umbilical cord no different than a pilot that's flying one of them jets. They got to put that oxygen mask on. Only it's attached to their belly. That's where the food come down. They like an astronaut floating in there. Huh? Baby with a flight suit on. But he's completely dependent. He's completely dependent. And, 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 and how well that child does or how well that child survives is going gonna, is gonna to pertain to the nurturing of that mother. Completely dependent, don't know anything. And when the baby comes out, he's just goober. He's a goober. His, his bones and stuff ain't formed yet. And you, when you look at that child's eyes, it's interesting, ain't it? Might not have an eye color yet. Them eyes might be mercury color. It's like a consciousness from somewhere else. Now, why them eyes are like mercury? They're so shiny and bright. And even if we are bright eyed as we get older, it is not the same as the eyes that we once had. In its brightness, it's dull in color in comparison. How does this reflect the psyche of the mind or the waters of the deep? And then we rely on eyesight to have vision. And when we rely on eyesight, we lose insight. And when we lose insight, we lose foresight in the wake of knowledge. And when we have knowledge, we know a lot more, but we see a lot less, don't we? And I'll get into this a little bit later, but I'm just summarizing different points of how these things echo. Uh, we're only on verse 13. Okay. Um, so and the evening and the morning were the third day. Here again it is spoken of the evening and the morning were, were the third day. Therefore these connotated evening being first, meaning the conception of creation, and all things in development are made in the intimacy of night. The secret chamber or spiritual um, or spiritual places for progress during a dark night of the soul before day breaks again. All right. They say sleep is a cousin of death. Right. And when you wake up, if you're blessed, if God bless you to wake up, then that is as a resurrection. And in your sleep, you are unconscious. To go to. To go to sleep requires an aptitude of faith, even though we do it naturally. For those who have an easy time sleeping, which many people have an easy time sleeping, many people look forward to it. Sleeping is a thing, but faith is completely different. We have dreams, but we forsake insight for knowledge. This is what I was talking about just a second ago. Okay? And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser to light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, 
and to rule over the day and over the night and to and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. OK. Lights. OK. Lights in the firmament denote luminaries or angels of the gospel of life, which is testimony of Christ and the word of the gospel. The firmament separate uh, separate from the womb. Um, the stars of navigation are as the way of life, according to truth, coming together for a time to congregate and separate the darkness of the earth. But as in the firmament, as in the loins, a navigation system transcendent of space time to provide light for the earth and changing of seasons. These stars are the light and are the light and the earth. These stars are the light and the earth bears the light as a witness for a season and a burden at other times. All right. Mankind is a burden to the earth. We are. You know what I'm saying? Um, carrying on. Um, this is where and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. These luminaries rule over the day and night. The day star is Christ, who is who is ruler and the light of the world. The world or earth is Lucy or Lucifer, who bears the light in the archetype of man's impartial or imperfect knowledge. And the stars are the witness, saints and disciples who give testimony of Christ. The stars are as the gospel and the moon, the lesser light, reigns night as a feminine principle denoting mankind. Okay. Denoting mankind or Adam. All right. The moon steals her light from the sun and her ways are unknown. Measuring the cycle of a time and process of time for a period controlling tides and waters. The total sum of waters, whether of the planetary value, both whole and finite, such as the carbonite earthen vessels and mankind being 80 percent of water. The menstrual flow of women. OK, it said Jeremiah, when it talks about, I believe it's talking about the day of the Lord. OK, where he says, uh, why do I see men's faces turn pale white as if a woman, in, 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 you know, what I'm saying with labor pains and travail. Right. He's talking about the shaking fear and women's contractions when they're in, when they're going into labor. And they're so frightened that they're that they're literally in pain at the day of the Lord for all those who didn't believe. Now, you see, the the, the, the the reason why I bring forth this verse is because he's talking about mankind and he's talking about mankind as a woman because he's talking about the elemental. Um, he's talking about the elemental uh, 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 comprising of man being comprised of the dust of the field knowing that the earth is Lucy or Lucifer because she bears the light. OK, she bears the light. She is burdened with the things that mankind does on the earth. She is the mother. She, her, she her nature has to be control, cruel because not only is she protecting her treasures, she then has to protect that child. And then that child is dependent upon her. So she has to be more fierce. OK. That's 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 what it is. That's what that is, where the nature of a man is to give and the nature of a woman is to receive in terms of man's knowledge. We cannot reach the wisdom that is celestial. The celestial wisdom must come down and the wisdom comes down into the soil of our mind. Just like a seed is planted into the soil, we receive those insights and foresights. The wisdom that comes from God, the inspiration that comes from God into our mind. Those things are spiritual. And we said, oh, I, ha I, I, I have an idea. And what do you say? You have an idea. You didn't conceive the idea. You didn't come up with the idea, but rather you were given an idea. And that idea was planted into you, but it was from the celestial portion. The highest you could reach in your knowledge, you would perceive that you have done so, but you did not because there is nothing new under the sun. So how did you get something new?
So this is the situation that God gives freely and it's written in scripture that he does not upbraid his knowledge, his wisdom. If you ask or inquire of him, if you are able to have insight or you pay attention, the spirit will show you these things. The answer will come to you. It might not come to you right then. Sometimes it comes in phases of time. It may take a few days of you seeing several things and through your subconscious, all of a sudden it will up in your mind. You'll say, I got it. That makes sense. All right. These little messages, whether it be a wrapper on the ground or something you see uh, uh, off in the distance or whatever, will be little connotations or fragments of that message. And these archetypes are as angels are lights because it means something to you, whereas to somebody else, it would mean nothing. So that that is. Um, that is that is what that is, but Adam mankind okay mankind in relation to god god is in the masculine the spiritual the spiritual creation that is in the masculine principle all right and you got to think of it as a chain so the next chain down the next chain down that former creation is going to be in the feminine principle all right so mankind because it receives wisdom is in the feminine pr uh, 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 principle all right so, and I'm going to show you, I'm not getting into it today, but when we get to that part in Genesis, Adam, it says male and female, he created them, plural. It was a colony of both males and females. They both were considered to be Adam. All right. You could call them Adamites. Makes it a little bit easier to understand that idea. Okay. But it wasn't like one dude was created. And then later on, a female was created. It didn't go down like that, right? So in terms of equality and female rights, looks how it, look how it changes that dynamic. Incredibly so. It's pertaining to what archetype of creation you were created as. All right? So, uh, continuing on. Uh, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. All right? This was the fourth conception. All right. Each conception and expanse, uh, expanse of the evening and the morning, I believe, connotate a thousand years denoting a church age or a congregation. All right. The word church is also correlated with age. And when it keeps when it repeats these days and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Remember, as I, I was speaking before in the spirit. I was speaking before how the evening comes first and things are formed out of the night. Even if you're just going and taking things for granted and getting wild for the night, something could be on the way that was created. Things go bump in the night. And some people believe in ghosts, but the spirit could be on the face of the waters. You see what I'm saying? That would be in the evening, in the intimacy of night. All right. Something could be on the way in the early morning. All right. That ship was conscious. It gave off light. And that light it gave off was reflected from a light. And that light it was reflected from in them depths had to be consciousness or had to be spiritual. How else would you find UV light inside of there? And that which it takes its light from somewhere else. That's where we get the connotation of mankind equating to the moon principle, which doesn't follow a cycle. But women do consequently. All of these things correlate and link together. All of these things correlate and link together and, and pertaining to understanding life. All right. So it's a humbling thing to be a man and connotating yourself in the feminine principle. How many dynamics would this change in terms of relation, in, in terms of relations and understanding? All right. I dare not go there because I don't, I, I don't know, understand, but I would connotate in what principle and context where certain things written and certain understandings and certain relationships may not be as it appeared. It may not. 
I'm not going to go into depth. You either caught it or you didn't. But it may not. Don't quote me on it. I got to get to that part of scripture. But it may not. The connotation in those which such were created in the spiritual portion may also be different. The binary system is set for the earth. But beyond that binary system, there isn't anything necessarily absolutely structured where it has to be a particular way. All right. These are the correlations and the rules governing pertaining to the fall. We haven't got to that part yet. Okay. And Genesis. All right. But we're still dealing with the with the creation, and I'm I'm a uh, I just got a little bit more here to go. Um, but each each time it says the evening and the morning, okay, there was something that happened in between the evening and the morning, okay, a relation between the celestial. And the physical, that's that's merely what I'm pointing out. And it's written that a thousand years is as a day to the Lord. That means a thousand years, a thousand of man's years on earth is as a single day to God. So when it gets into creation and the creation of the heavens and the earth and it being created in seven days, we're talking about an expanse of seven different ages or 7,000 millennia or yeah or not seven millennia but 7,000 years seven millennia right so those days could be a thousand years apiece these are entire ages okay of time all right so and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Okay, so basically it's pretty self-explanatory. Creatures were created, the fowls of the air and the creatures of the sea, which can transpose with heavenly archetypes of thought. Those of the sea as the depths of a deep thinker or the fowl of the air as a sanguine. Okay, a sanguine is a person personality type. Somebody, uh, somebody w w where you ever meet somebody and you say, boy, that person's head is always in the clouds. All right, the person's head is always that they're always in a they're always in a good mood. They never seem to be grounded. You know they're they're hopeful. That's a dreamy person. That person's dreamy. All right, the fowls are also in terms of scripture. When you get into understanding scripture, can be represented as thoughts, and so can the creatures, the creatures also in the sea, and the creatures in the earth, pertains to. Archetypes of thoughts an individual may have the depths or the deep thinker You know what I'm saying? You get into like the unconscious mind the subconscious mind and the heaven the you know what I'm saying the first heaven which we can access the sky on earth, right? These are Archetypes of of thought or even in terms of like what my teacher saw was me having ADD and what have you they will say, boy, he's really is a space cadet. They're talking about archetypes of thought. All right. So every creature was after its own kind. All right. And, um, and God saw that it was good. All right. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creepy thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. 
and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and the and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and God saw that it was good all right so living creature um, living creatures and beasts were created on the sixth day all right or in the sixth age all right uh, the world tree when we get into the world tree or the cedar of Lebanon that's written in scripture, the tree that everybody like does business with or the other world religions or what have you, that has that has probably been around since that has been around since the third day. Okay? That was there, that was probably been there three thousand years before man had even before man that you know, man's age had even came about on the sixth day. Okay? So that was the former church, all right? It had been around at this point for 3,000 years uh, by the time uh, by the time man was about to be created, all right? These are, these are these, you know what I'm saying? These ancient schools and these ancient, you know what I'm saying, ancient religions and what have you, some of them, you know what I'm saying? Some of them been around. You know, they had a different way they had a different way of studying things, uh, uh, studying things at that point in time. It, and that knowledge, it's not that that knowledge is unfruitful or anything like that. You know, the knowledge, the knowledge is good. OK, the knowledge, the knowledge was good. God seen that everything that he created was good. OK. And so the tree of good and evil, you know, we can't say was a was an evil tree. There is a subtlety. OK. And understanding the tree of good and evil but ultimately all things that god created was good so we have to take that and understand that and the circumference of man's knowledge man's knowledge man's principles and man's understanding which is subtle as you could say a serpent okay if man has a carnal way of understanding spiritual things then he is low in thought that is that is the basis of where we get into the the you know what i'm saying the tree of good and evil all right, but we haven't gotten there yet. I read the first 25 verses uh, in Genesis, and that was that was just over the creation and what have you. And uh, I uh, going further into that, the 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 next portion is about the creation of man, and we'll get into chapter two and what have you in the in, in the next segment. But that's all I'm gonna put here for now. Peace and blessings be with everyone. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas and, and happy holidays to you. Um, I'm out.